Good morning, Metalheads here, and welcome to a new episode of the Metal Meltdown. And today, we're looking at the latest album from Pelican, entitled Nighttime Stories. Aside from intervals and animals as leaders, I've never really looked at a lot of instrumental rock or heavy metal music. I've never actively avoided it. I guess just not enough good shit from it has come my way. I, I don't know. It hasn't really bothered me, mind you. I kind of find that sometimes instrumental rock and metal bands are just kind of jamming along and don't really have much to say or communicate. Obviously, there are exceptions to this. But it goes without saying that you need to be really great fucking songwriters if you're going to get by on simply instrumentals. And I don't know, I haven't found a lot of bands that can do that. However, Pelican's an exception. I, I enjoy Pelican's music quite a bit. I think they create really emotional, lavish, and dynamic compositions. I think that it's great, relaxing, atmospheric music with great guitar work and great bass work and great drum work. There's a lot of interesting themes and ideas communicated through all of this. It's like perfect background music, and I know a lot of bands don't really like hearing that kind of thing, like, oh, this is great music to have on in the background, and I, I get where you're coming from, but honestly, sometimes that's just all you need, and that's what Pelican was for me, especially in college. I would have this playing on the background while I was studying, while I was trying to relax, and it was just a, a really pleasant musical experience that helped me get through some interesting times. I wouldn't consider myself a diehard fan, mind you, but point being is that I really enjoy Pelican's work, and I was pretty interested to hear that the band would finally be putting out another record, Nighttime Stories, and especially so when I found out about everything that had gone on during the creation of this album and the complicated emotions that fuel it. As it's not just the new album from Pelican, it's also an album inspired by real-life loss, tragedy, and suffering. Ideas and themes that have naturally emboldened and resonated within Pelican's sound and now make them all the more powerful, all the more emotional, all the more complex and interesting. I actually found an article on NPR.org that explains everything pretty nicely. I'm going to read from that now, if you'll just bear with me for one moment. Uh, it says here, two of Pelican's members, guitarist Trevi Shelley Dubois and drummer Tr uh, Larry Herweg, also belonged to the group Tusk, whose singer Jody Minock died in 2014 of an undiagnosed heart defect. Nighttime Stories was a title for a Tusk album proposed by Minock, and Pelican chose it in part as a tribute to their late comrade. The article goes on to state that guitarist Dallas Thomas uh, also lost his father during the production of the album, and even makes a note that uh, Dallas actually uses his father's acoustic guitar throughout the album, notably on opening track WST. Stating here, WST launches nighttime stories on a tone of hushed, haunting folk. That is, before the rest of the band implodes around Thomas with a crushing cascade of doom-infused distortion that's equally melodic and mournful. There's a lot of information to take in within that article. A lot of trauma, a lot of heartbreak, a lot of devastation. But, as NPR points out in this article, Pelican use all of that to their advantage to create something really exciting and extravagant and beautifully composed. The aforementioned WST is really a fantastic example. The flourishes, the homey, warm touches of acoustic guitar are genuinely very sweet. And the way the track evolves around those acoustic riffs and gets heavier and more distorted, it makes it feel all the more real. It feels like you're there with Dallas experiencing his pain. It really does feel like the sonic manifestation of loss and heartbreak. Or a song like Cold Hope, which has this very devastating sonic anxiety buried underneath aggressive, muscular, almost sludgy riffs. Or a song like Cold Hope, which has this really raw, sonic anxiety buried underneath huge, sludgy riffs. Doomy, sludgy, hellish, as the title of the track implies, there is no light, no hope to be found within this album's core. As well as the title track, Nighttime Stories itself, which is perhaps one of the most disorienting cuts on the entire record. I love the sonic and emotional evolution that we see throughout all of these tracks. I mean, something like WST starts things off really somber, but still also quite soft before evolving, and the rest of the album kind of follows that plan and continues to evolve. It continues to get more aggressive, more depressing, more violent, more anxious. 
the closest we get to any kind of break in this escalation is probably in the form of It Started At Me, which is undoubtedly the album's quietest moment, but still sears with these really eerie uh, fretwork bits, very soft-fingered chords. You can hear fingers sliding across strings, a lot of atmospheric effects. It really just feels like the setup to a gigantic explosion. It's peaceful yet very tense. Like, imagine being in a serial killer's house and he doesn't know you're there and you're trapped in the closet. That's kind of what's being communicated here. But unquestionably, the most interesting, emotional, and challenging piece on the record comes in the form of the eight-minute full moon black water, which takes a lot of the tricks and techniques, themes, and ideas established across the record and combines it into a great, big, almost Mastodon-style epic. It's really spectacular how the band communicates their pain and heartache without a singer in this track, how they communicate it purely through their songwriting and their atmosphere. It's so good that I don't even really want to talk to you about it anymore. I want you to go out and explore this track for yourself and really spend some time with it and dissect it and take everything from it that you can. It's a fantastic number. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. It's one of the best songs of the year so far. Honestly, I don't have really any problems with this record. The, the songwriting, the musicianship, the atmosphere, the production, it's all fucking great. You could argue at some points that it still kind of falls into the trappings of instrumental rock. Sometimes it does kind of lull along, and that would be a fair argument if you were to make it. I'd be lying if there weren't a couple moments where I do kind of sit there going, all right, let's get to the next juicy bit. But everything is placed here for a reason. Everything communicates something. Everything evolves to something. So any problem you have with any particular moment doesn't matter in the next moment because it has bloomed into something else entirely. In my opinion, it makes for one of the most complex and emotionally rich albums of the year. I'm gonna give this thing a four to five, leaning towards a 4.5 out of five. Wherever we're so fucking close to that 0.5, you can almost taste it. But as I said before, there are some little bits and pieces where the band simmers too long on a particular moment. And yes, as I just said, it also does evolve and bloom into something else, but it is something we have to take into account nonetheless. But again, with that said, it is remarkable how much Pelican communicate and express without a lead singer. It doesn't make for the most accessible record. It's not something I'm going to be playing at a party anytime soon. For that matter, come to think of it, maybe that's a part of it. Yeah, that actually kind of makes sense to a certain extent. Like, this is the kind of record that you have big headphones for. You know, you put them on... And you, you wrap up in like a really cold blanket with a cup of uh, a tea and you just let this album wash right over you. I don't really know if this would change your mind if you were not really into a lot of instrumental music, but I would still say give it a shot nonetheless because there's a lot of really interesting things going on here. Fans of instrumental metal and post metal are going to find a lot to enjoy here. I don't know if I would say this is their best album. I don't quite have the information for that, but I would say that of all their records, this is their most unique and it probably stands out the most. Pelican have created something really emotional and powerful and honest via nighttime stories. And while it's not going to be for everyone, just given the nature of this genre and how people sometimes react to it, I think if you give it time and you give it patience, you are going to find a lot to love at it. And it's it's may even end up on your top 10. I can picture this being a top 10 album for a lot of people, actually. So again, four out of five, a really great record. Approach it with a wee bit of patience, but please approach it nonetheless. You won't regret it. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown. I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be. So what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? Thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown e-fucking-immediately. And you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.